Hi guys, welcome back from the video. Today we're not actually fishing in the UK. Me and my dad just got back from a fishing holiday in Fort Ventura. Um, we, had, we had a really good time away. Plenty of fish and some big fish as well. Loads of different species which you'll see in, in the video. Uh, before we get into it, I will mention that you do need a fishing license when fishing in Fort Ventura. And well, you can actually get the license when you're out there, but when you get there, the first day, you, you're eager to go fishing, so you don't really want to be wasting time looking for the offices to find a license. So you can actually get them beforehand online. You've got to apply for them. I advise to get the, I advise to, to look a week or two in advance, just because with the emails and stuff, it might take a bit of time. So I'll add the link in in the description below of where to get that. So what I'll do now, I'll just run through some of the gear I took and what I used and what I found worked well so when you guys go out there you know what you know what gear to take really so let's get to it right so as it was our first time out there we had to chat to a few of our friends that have been there a few times and a lot of them advised to use an up and over rig so standard up and over rig we've all seen it before so I'm pointing too much with details We're using 7 to 10 ounce leads 800 pound backbone and the same with the hook link 100 pound and I was using a pair of the 6O Tronics Pro big dog hooks in the 6O size and we were also using circle also using circle hooks as well for the big rays but we were told there's a lot of the couches bream out there and you, you rely, if you use the bigger bait you're relying on the fish to swallow the whole bait down and the hook to be able to hook the fish and uh, the couches bream haven't got the biggest mouth so they're not going to swallow the whole mackerel down and such so I was using a panel just to up my chance of actually hooking one and I actually did hook one on the last session of the trip so you'll see that in, towards the end of the video um, reel wise for fishing I'm using the Penslammer 3 in the 8500 size that's loaded with 80 pound braid and 100 pound leader and you might think 80 pound braid's a bit heavy but it's pretty much clean ground completely, so you're not going to be getting stuck to struggling too much to snap that 80 pound braid off in the snag. But it's more so, if you do hook something big, you can apply a lot more pressure to the fish to, to get it in, so you don't lose the fish and leave all the line trading behind the fish. So, using them, and as well for the bigger fish, I was using the Pen Fathom Twin Speed Lever Drags and the 30 size. You do need to get them magged as they are very fast really if you don't you'll end up blowing them up a lot they're loaded with 35 pound mono and again 100 pound leader and I was also using the exact same reel but in the 15 size for any of the normal fish that we do for the smaller stuff uh, rods I was using the Tronics Pro the Competition Match GT and those things handled it no problem Casting the big baits, the big legs, and also actually landing the fish, actually bringing them up. You'll see in the videos they handled it without ease. So, what I'll do now, I'll talk a bit about the fish out there, and then I'll show you some of the footage. Right, so a quick thing I'll mention before I show you the footage is the angel sharks out there, they are heavily protected, they're classed as an endangered species. So, it's so important to, if you, well, if you do hook one, to land it, unhook it, a quick photo and get it back as safely and quickly as possible. And as well, on the topic of fish safety, it's so important to take a uh, weighing mat, a weighing sling, if you do want to weigh any of the fish. The bigger fish, you can actually just measure them, and then there's a few websites online where you can actually convert the measurement to the weight. But I use the Rapala weigh sling, and you can fit huge fish in those. When they open up, they got little pockets in the corners so the nose of the fish can, can go in there. So when you weigh them, it's, it's completely safe for the fish. And yourself, if you're weighing the stingray, obviously you don't want to get stung by one of them. And as well, you, you, will, you will see in the video, when I weigh fish, I, if I can help it, I'll, when I actually take the weight of the fish with the scales in the sling, I'll try and stand over a rock pool so if something happens, the fish does happen to flap around and get out of the sling, at least it falls into the pool rather than onto bare rock. It saves doing the fish any damage. And 
it doesn't take a lot to carry that with you. They fold up to pretty much nothing. You can see there, that just folds up to nothing. That could fit in your box or your rucksack. It weighs nothing, so it just, the extra couple, what's probably not even a pound. So it doesn't take a lot to carry that with you. Just for the extra care of the fish, really. It's pointless weighing them by the mouth. It's a lot of weight of the fish. It's if it's worth weighing, it's going to be a decent fish, so it's not worth hanging the fish by its jaw because it does the fish damage and yeah it probably will swim off but chances are it would do a lot of damage and it could end up killing the fish after an hour or so so uh, yeah I definitely advise getting one of those I will add the, the link in below to where I get them from so yeah fish safety is very important Just had this uh, beautiful diamond rake. Just had it recovering in this pool for about 20 minutes while we sorted out the other ones. Just had this double tape. So let's get them back. What a beautiful fish. Let's lift it one more time. Beauty. Right, let's get them back. For our standard fishing on our other rods than the slider one, I've just got basically a standard up and over rig, same as back home, really, exactly the same setup. The only difference is the hook link and the backbone is made up of 100 pound mono. And going down to an HO circle tuck with the same braided dongle, so I thought you, I'll show you exactly how I'm baiting that up again. Same as the slider, I'm using, I'm using SCAD on this one, I've got basically split the fish down the center and I've cut, the, I've cut it into two. Then I go and use my baiting needle, put it through the one center, through one of them. Just gonna elasticate that. Get my circles hook. Bring it up through there. Then I sit the braid up against the flesh side of the fish. Elasticate that, and then get the other side. Rest of that on. And elasticate all that all the way up. I put some elastic going in the length of the bait as well, just to keep it nice and tight together. There's a lot of small puffer fish out there and other small rock species 
and they're ripping away the bait a fair bit today so going a bit more elastic than normal right that should do it there we go there's our next bait ready to go nice scad bait on a circle duck nice cast is out now try and get another one Right guys, as soon as I had that nice diamond rail on the slider then, I thought I'd talk you through the setup. Rod wise, I just, for the slide, I've got a, a Blue Marlin Bronzy Rod from South Africa. And then reel wise, I've got a 10 fathom lever drag twin speed in the 30 size. And I've had that magged and loaded with 35 pound mono and 100 pound leader. And that then runs down to the ring that comes with the slider. I've got that tied to my main line, my, my shock leader. And then a short length of 100 pound leader to an 8 ounce lead. So what I'll do now, I'll cast this out and then I'll let the line settle so you just don't touch deep water and then I'll beat the slider up and get that on there. Right, so we got our slider clip, which I'll explain when I'm actually put it on my main line, how to actually attach it. And then I got that running on 100 pound mono, down to a 7-0 circle hook, and then underneath is a 6-0 big dog. And what I'll do, I'll beat that up with a whole scad. I'll just go ahead and just basically make a flapper out of it. So I'll cut the tail off cut up about a quarter of the fish just to cut that spine out so that's a bit of the spine out from the center and you got two little fillets flapping away and I go ahead and just hook the circle hook underneath the jaw, going down up into the, the head of the fish. It's quite a bony part of the top in between the eyes, so it sits in perfectly. And then I just get my, the big dog, which is a semi-circled hook. And then I just hook that into the side of the fish like that. Sitting there perfectly. And what you'll find, that'll be flapping away in the water. And you'll have little fish pecking away at the actual flesh of the fillet and then all the little fish with bits of the scad actually floating around to draw in a bigger fish. So if you come down to my rods, I'll show you how actually you put that on the slider. Oh, so that lead is settled now in that deep water. Line. Pull the line back, pick up your main line, and then with your slider, you've got taken the clip off, lay the main line along it, and then back up so it's at the back of the slider, and then wrap it around clockwise, going right round, 
and eventually on your last one it should pop up so you've got the slider running freely on your main line and I clip that back on so that is running facing that way so you've got the lead facing to your shock leader and then if you take that down to the water's edge Up there now. Keeping your line tight. Make it in short. If you're trigger the rod, then it will send it out slowly. Right, I've been jigging that rod now for a little bit. That's given enough time for bait to go out far enough. So I set my drag, chuck them in the stand, and I keep that line fairly tight without tripping the lead. So it keeps the main line tight, which helps the slider run down it better, because if the line's slack, it could spin round and not actually work as effective. So that now is fishing. So give it a bit over to get a fish on. Right, so up there, the locals do a lot of lure fishing for the Benito bluefish and the, there's a few, well, quite a lot of barracuda up there. And I didn't do a great deal of lure fishing, as the locals were there all the time. We were there spinning and they didn't really seem to catch a great deal of fish. So I didn't really do a great deal of lure fishing. But the, lure, the rods I was using was the Hart Marine Power. And I had that with a, the Hart Combat JS reel. I that's loaded up with 40 pound braid. I advise going slightly heavy with your lure gear because the bonitos do fight well, as you probably assume they're, they're part of the tuna family. Um, lure wise, a lot of the locals seem to just use metals, nothing complicated. I did take, I took far too many lures with me, way too many, and also all I used, I didn't really do a lot, but I didn't catch anything on the lures, but the locals seem to just use them. I did actually find a couple. Well, I found this lure on the rock, so they obviously left there by accident. Just a small little pink jig. So basically, anything on that it seems to work well up there. And while we were there, a lot of the there was a lot of bait fish in the water, and some small sardines and mackerel. So what I did use was um, the, the. I did take a couple of the small, the heart torito, I think they're called. Double check. Yeah, they're called the Heart Torito lures. They're 80 mil long. They just resemble the fish that the Benito were fishing, they were feeding on. I just tried them the silver and the white. I didn't catch anything on the lures, like I said, but I advise to fish that sort of size lure and then just your metals then. I wouldn't go too big with your lures. So yeah. That's about it really with the lure stuff. If you do want to take some, that's about all you need really, that sort of range of lures. Right, so bait wise, out there, there is a few supermarkets and a Lidl's. The Lidl's has more frozen stuff, they don't actually have a fresh fish counter. Um, there's a Euro Spa, which we found to be the best one. They had the fresh fish counter and they had all the, all the mackerel, scad, they had squid and octopus as well, and anything you need, it's all there, and prawn. For the catch of the smaller stuff, which I'll show you now. But we made a, a slight mistake where we bought our bait as and when we needed it. And the last, if I remember right, the last one or two days before the trip, yeah, I'm sure, the last two days, it was bank holiday up there, so the supermarkets didn't actually have any fresh fish. And they were shot on the last day we were there, so we had to go to the spa, the, the Lidl's, and we managed to find some frozen sardines, which worked, we had fish on them, but the mackerel worked the best by far and a lot of the, the small green species that you will catch while you're up there and for that we were told just to use basically a light out of rod or any spinning rod really it's all going to work the same and no need to overcomplicate it just basically a simple running lead you go. just got to pick that up down to a swivel two foot hook link a vape pound fluoro and then down to a little small, probably want to pick that up, but a little small size six hook. And you bake that up with prawn, and you make a ground bait up out of bread from the supermarket, and you flick that in, just 
and you put little bits of the ground bait in and often and you'll notice all the little small fish coming up feeding on that so yeah that is that's pretty much about it for the bait really i will add the I'll, I'll probably add the, the address actually to the, the euro spa in the description below for the bait um, but yeah that's about it for the bait really a lot of smaller fish will catch while you're there on little scratching these little three flappers and stuff which you'll also see in the, later on the video when I'm on one of the beaches I'm catching all the bogus and small bream stuff so so yeah Here you go guys, had a lovely ball rate. 18, just weighed it, it's 18 pounds. Absolutely awesome looking fish. So gonna start, nah, there's that, there's the nose why it's called the ball rate. Or duck bill, either one. So we're gonna get him back. So let's come down here. If you can, it's good to support the belly of the fish when you're carrying them. Hold them there for a minute. Wait for that next swell. Here it comes. And then back she goes. Straight down. Ready? Just our first bite of the morning. Decent pullover. Oh, it's probably another rate. There he's there. Let's try it. Let's set that hook. Yep, that's another rate. Let's go off this point now. Don't feel too big at all, this one. Lead us up through the eyes. Oh, he's fighting well now. Oh, I got oh. A, an angel shark. Had another se awesome session this morning. I've had my main target of the trip, an awesome angel shark going 30 pound. Look at that, awesome fish. And then my dad's just had an awesome skate. Pretty sure it's a white skate. 29 pound that one, absolute awesome fish. Right, let's get him back. We'll get this back first now. It's got really bad thorns on this one, so we have to slide this one over the rocks into the gully. Take the weight of it. Just let that swell take it away. There she goes. Right, let's get the angel shark back. Absolute awesome fish. Made dried right up with that. Let's get him back. I'll take it. Back she goes. Awesome. Just had a good run on our last cast. 
about to start packing up. I had a really good run. It feels like another good ray. Ain't far off now, I don't think. It's given one or two good runs, but it's not doing a great deal yet. Most probably could give me grief as it comes closer in. It's starting to feel a little bit heavier now. It's so important to keep these fish coming because there's the ledges underneath. And as soon as your line touches those, you run the risk of cutting it off. You've got a lot of barnacles, as you can probably see, along the rocks. The guys next to us have got another Benito. They've been spinning for about well, a few hours. And that guy landing one now, he had one about an hour or so ago. Right, a leader's up. If we go around, that's him. Right, we've got a leader on the reel now. That might be another eagle ray. Oh no. So there's a stingray. If you can pass me the gaff, please. Right, we'll get this fish landed. It's not an ideal way to land them. But just because the ground we're fishing over on these ledges, there's not really a, a better way of landing them. You've got to get the gaff just in the nip of the nose. Try and get, get a front over. Right, once it's up on his foot. Oh, it hasn't got a tail, this one. That's a safe stingray. Safest stingray in the sea. Right, so what I'll just do. So unclip my rig. Get that out the way. He is just hooked in the lip, this one. It's pretty safe to put your hands for the fish and yourself just in the where the eyes are. Just reach on and just pop the hook out. Easier said than done. Right, we'll take the fish up in the pool first, actually. Or well, if I can, actually, just flip him on his back. <coughs> Ooh, didn't like that. Right, hooks out. If we can flip, flip him back upright. Like I said with the eagle earlier on, if you can't, it's good to support the belly of the fish. Let's just take him up into the pool which is over here. Right. Awesome. That's another stingray. They look amazing in the water. Amazing. Just like I said, the tail's actually been cut off of this one or bitten off. So this is completely safe to go anywhere near either end of the fish. So uh, we'll just get some photos now and we'll get back to you when I put it back. Well, we've taken some quick photos. So I just got my weighing scales and my hook it and the uh, weighing sling. So I just go and grab the fish. Just guide them back slowly round. If, it's, if they did have a sting on his tail, 
you won't be able to actually put your hands underneath it because that tail can whip round, but seeing as it hasn't got a stinger, it's safe enough. Right. Try and get in a bit more. If you can, it's good to hold them over the water. So if it does fall out while you're weighing, at least it goes into water, not into rock. Right. That is 31, 31.5. So the, the, the sling is a pound. So I've caught it 30 pounds. Awesome. All right, as soon as it's in the weighing mat, I'll carry it down to the water to put them back. Just sitting down by here. That's fast you take it. There she goes. Another race safely landed and safely released. Awesome. Right, so as you've seen already, we've had some pretty amazing fishing so far of the trip. And what you'll see next is, on one of the sessions, me and my dad were fishing and he had a run near the stingray on. And as his fish was coming in closer to the rocks to land, my rod actually went off. So we had the double hook up. I had the butterfly ray on in my second one of the session, well, of the trip. And I didn't do any filming of that just because I, I had to land my dad whilst reeling the mine. So I, I videoed them as they were going back. So. See what you'll see next. Another wicked start to our morning. My dad's had this lovely stingray. Most probably about 50 pounds. Let's get this one back. Look at that swell. And I've had this lovely butterfly ring. This smaller than one I had yesterday. Let's go back. We've got swell. There we go. Excellent. There's more bait out there. Right, so what you'll see next is uh, the two marks we fished on the beaches towards the end of the trip. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce the name of the mark, so what I'll do, I'll add them into the clips of the, of the beaches now. Uh, the fish wasn't too good on the beaches, so they're only smaller clips of the fish I had. So yeah, that's what you'll see next. Just put, our, just put the first rig out, and straight away within five minutes it went off. Awesome little hammerhead shark. Most probably about seven pounds, eight pounds. Awesome fish. My tip is off. Hammer. Absolutely amazing. Let's get him back. Right, we've uh, we've come to a new beach for tonight's session. It's a mark called Jijinama, if I'm pronouncing that right. I'll add the spelling in at the top anyway. But we're down here tonight to try and catch some stingrays again. We're fishing for, for the, the small bream as well with some small, smaller hooks, to try and get some fresh bait. So, just on our second cast now. Nothing yet, but fingers crossed we should get a few fish out. So I'll get back to with a few fish hopefully. I've been fishing for a bit now with the scratching rigs. And we've had plenty of fish so far. Just had a nice double shot of bogus. 
I'll show you. I'll show you some of the fish we've had. I got them in a little bucket there, keeping them alive. Little burger. Just with the with the rigs, it's just pretty simple. Just three flappers, some eight pound mono for the hook link, size six hooks, and a little pop up on. And that's just bits of squid tentacles and prawn. Anything for the small fish bait to even work well. So yeah, we'll uh, get these bait back up now. Get it back up then. Hopefully get some stingrays on the feet. Here we go, we've been fishing with the three rigs for for a bit now, trying to get some bait. And we've got a few different fish so far. There's a boga, which we've had a few of them, which is a pretty pretty popular bait really over here for just about anything. And I've had this nice bream. I'm not sure what type it is, but I'll add that in. I'll find out and put it in. And my dad has caught, which is quite unusual, never seen one before. A wide-eyed flounder. And you can see his eyes there. That's very unusual. They're a pretty cool little mini species though. You can see his eyes there, how far apart they are. It's pretty cool. You most probably put him back, he's, he's a bit small for bait. But yeah, most of these small bream species and the bogus, they're all good bait for the for the big stingrays. Especially these. So we'll keep fishing now, try and get some more for bait. And fingers crossed we might have a get back to you soon with a big stingray on. And there we have an octopus. We've been getting a few bites for the past hour or so. We're slow pullovers. And there'd been a big hole just out the oct out the bait. And I thought there might have been cuttlefish or squid, but I just had this come in. It's a nice octopus. Amazing colours on it. That's gonna make a good bait, I think. If that focuses on it. Crazy creatures. Bane himself in the stone toilet, so it. Yeah. Right. Let's uh, get that bait back out there, hopefully. I'll get a stinger. He was exactly which way the sea is. The sea is just off over that ledge there. And he's going straight into that into that direction. Yeah, clever creatures though. Here we go guys, so the lovely little butterfly ray. Smallest ray of the trip actually. If you have a look here, you can see how short the tail is. But don't be fooled, that is a big barb for the size of the ray. The tail is only about the length of my hand. And a massive barb on it. Right, we've had a quick photo. Let's get it back, put my headlamp on. Get him back. Here we go guys, on our last night of the trip. And I got myself an awesome couches bream, or couches bream. Absolutely buzzing with that. One of those fish I really wanted. That took a whole sardine on a on a six oak panel as well, just over the edge. So it just shows when they want it, they'll they'll swallow any hook down. It has taken the hooks right down, so I will be a lovely table fish, so that'll be coming back with me. But awesome. Buzzing with that. Let's get the rod back out. Here we go, my dad's just had his second white skate of the trip. And I thought I'd do a little video just for any of you who do come over. If you do come across one of these things, be so careful. I, you could, as you can see along there, and all the way around the wing, is some pretty nasty um, spikes. You can see on that rag, it's... My dad's first one the other day, he shredded his hands a bit. And on the tail, all the way along that tail, it's just vicious spines. But we picked the other one up he has, as we do back in the UK, by putting your fingers in there to hold them like a normal ray. 
and even underneath, if I can lift that up. I don't know if you could pick that up. That is literally his mouth. And he's got some big teeth in there for a ray. It's literally just lined with thorns. Absolutely savage. Some brutal spines there. Right, let's get this one back. I've just taken some photos of this white skate. It's a male as well. Right, let's get him back. Put him there, let the swell take him. Back down she goes. Awesome. I just reeled in to change over bait and there's this funny looking worm. I don't know if you can pick that up well. That should be all right. There's this funny looking worm hanging on the end of my hook. And I was told by a friend before we come over about these things, and I'm pretty sure this is one, it's called a fire worm. And if you do touch one, they injects poison into you and it, it literally feels like you're on fire. I don't think it's deadly as such, but you don't want to be touching them. So I just thought I'd show you in case any of you do come across one. Don't touch it. It's a big no-no from what I've heard anyway. Right, I'm gonna get it cut off. Right, so as you've just seen, that was our last session of the holiday. Well, we actually had a, a session on the following morning, but we didn't catch anything worth filming, so I didn't bother putting anything together of that. So, as you've just seen, the, the white skate and the fireworm, be so careful with those, especially that fireworm. There's not actually any treatment, apparently, for it, so you just have to bear through the pain, which is just the last thing you want when you go away fishing on holiday. And the white skate, I definitely advise putting rags on the fish when you pick them up for photo because my, my dad's hands got really badly cut in the last couple of days so it's just not worth it when we're away. Um, but yeah, that's about it really. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about anything else with the fishing or bait wise or any or rigs or anything, just leave them in the comments below. So yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.